everybody. Um, I am here to give you a little peek into how I make registration systems for relief block prints. Uh, so that would include um, MDF-backed linoleum. It would include uh, plywood. It would include <clears throat> shinna plywood-backed uh, cherry uh, from McLean's. Uh, and it also includes just um, a panel of wood uh, from the hardware store, okay? Um, and uh, when I'm doing relief, it's really important that I have a really uh, reliable and uh, stable registration system. Um, and so I'm gonna make a jig out of a piece of uh, foam board, foam core board that I have here. Um, this was left over from when I had to frame something. Uh, it's a little bit imperfect. You'll see it has wrinkles on this side. It has a crease. And here there are some knuckle prints and things like that. Um, but it doesn't really matter because it is square on the corners. And it's large enough for the project that I'm going to be working on. Um, for this, you know, in the past I've also used tag board, which is... Um, what I call that that backing material from the back of a sketchbook or the back of a, a newsprint block um, and I can show you what that looks like here um, it's this kind of material that is kind of brown in color and it's thick about like that okay so in the past if I have something really large that I have to register sometimes I'll use a large piece of tag board. Um, today, since I'm doing small blocks, uh, the foam core is gonna be sufficient. Um, so to start with, uh, the first thing that I needed to determine was my paper size. So I have a stack of Japanese paper here that has already been cut down to the size that I plan to be using. So in this case, um, it just so happened that the piece of foam core that I had lying around in my studio um, was larger than my paper size. Um, and that's really important. It needs to be, I would say, at least an inch or two larger on, on maybe like the long side than the paper that you're planning on using. Um, <clears throat> in this case, my paper is nine inches by 12 and a quarter, okay? Um, and the backing board that I'm going to be using, the foam core, is 14 on the long side by 11 on the short side. So it's going to be a tight, uh, it's going to be a tight fit, but it's large enough to work. Um, and so the thing that I do first is, um, and you can see that I've already drawn some marks on here because I didn't want to you know, waste your time watching me measure and do all that. So I've pre-measured and pre-drawn a lot of the marks that I'm using. Um, but I wanted to make sure to leave an inch, you know, at, at minimum on one side. So here um, I've got a one inch distance from the end of my board to the first line that I have here. This first line is going to indicate where the top of my paper or where one end of my paper is going to fall um, when I am printing and registering. Um, and so that is the distance of one inch here. Um, and that is exactly wide enough to allow me to apply a Turns Burton registration pin. Okay. So these are things that I get online through Turns Burton, uh, their website is um, right here. It's a little bit backwards, obviously, um, but Turns Burton Company, um, the website is here below, and um, this is their standard um, quarter inch uh, 0.055 round pin, okay? And then I have a, a pack of maybe one to 200 of these acetate or, you know, mylar, uh, tabs. Okay, so these are going to get taped onto my paper and they snap on uh, like so. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, not all of you might have something like this. So if you are not able to get this, um, I recommend that you, you make something similar. Um, some people have used dowel rods or even um, 
you know, a cut piece of foam core that's glued onto the surface of their backing board. Um, something like that could work. Um, if you have a regular hole punch, uh, you could maybe, you know, make a pin system that fits the, the standard hole punch size, and that way you can punch the ends of your paper. In this case, I'm going to be taping my pin to the mat board, and I'm also going to be taping with masking tape my, um, my tabs to the back of my paper. Um, and so let's see, the next thing that I do, um, you know, once I have that one inch mark drawn onto my, my foam core, um, I'm laying my piece of Japanese paper down here. Obviously it doesn't have to be Japanese paper. It can be any paper that you're going to be printing on. And I want to measure exactly to the end of my paper here. And so I'm going to draw another line here. Uh, that indicates where my paper ends. So here's where my paper begins, here's where it ends. Um, and you'll notice that I also drew a perforated um, sort of dotted line down the dead center of the foam core. Um, and this for me, it's not really essential for everybody, but I like to have that line indicated because um, in the absence of pins or tabs, you could also use the center line as a, a T and bar registration. Um, and I can tell you what that means as well. Um, and so um, I've got my center line indicated all the way down the middle. I've got my um, ending points of my, uh, my paper marked down here and here. Um, and then the next thing that I need to consider is the fact that I'm gonna have about um, an inch of my Japanese paper or, you know, whatever printing paper I'm using is going to get cut off um, after I'm done printing the edition because I like to attach my uh, tabs to my printing paper with masking tape and um, the process of removing the masking tape would probably ruin the paper. In most cases it does. And particularly with this very thin paper that I'm gonna be using, it will absolutely ruin or tear the paper. So what I do is when I'm done with the addition, I'm finished printing all of my layers, I just use a very sharp um, razor blade or X-Acto blade, and I just slice you know, that end of the paper right off. Um, and then I can take the tape off of my tabs and reuse them, um, but I need to allow space um, that is about the thickness of the tape that I'm going to be using so that, you know, this part of my paper is going to get wasted, okay? So this, this one inch section is going to get cut off at the very end. Um, and so then what I need to determine is what my printable area actually is going to be or, you know, what the what my, uh, my paper format after the trimming happens is actually going to be. So originally my paper was nine by 12 and a quarter. Once I get rid of that inch, it's gonna be nine wide by 11 and a quarter, okay? Um, and so I'm losing an inch of my paper. Um, and so um, now I have to determine where I want my block to be, okay? So, um, in this case, I've got my uh, four by six inch block here. It's uh, cherry laminated onto shin plywood and it's from McLean's. Um, but actually, um, I'm going to be also using this little block from the hardware store that I've already started carving. Um, and I can't remember what type of wood it is. It's a fairly hard wood um, and it was, um, you know, a long, a long piece that I had them cut down. And so you can see that on the back, um, it's a little bit ragged where the saw blade kind of cut through on both sides. But the person that I had doing the cutting was really careful and they always cut, you know, um, did all the cuts on the same side so that the front side, which is gonna be my carving and, and inking side is nice and smooth um, on all of the edges. Um, so that is uh, going to be, Let's see, this is five by three and a half. So now what I can do is I know that um, the center point of my block is gonna be at the one and three quarter mark. Okay, so um, just to, to double check, so half of three and a half is one and three quarters. Um, now I know that the center of my 
uh, foam core is already marked and so I can just sort of line that up and determine where I want that to be. Um, I want my print ultimately to be weighted um, and that means that the distance um, between the end of my image and the bottom of my um, of my paper is going to be greater than the distance from the top of my image to the top of the paper. And so um, the side where I'm going to be attaching my pins and tabs, I'm actually going to label that as the bottom of my image. And I'm also going to write pin and tab end. And that way, it just reminds me, you know, which, which way I want to be orienting my block when I put it in. Um, and then up here, this is going to be the top edge of my paper. And so I'm going to write top of image on this side. And that way, when I'm uh, printing, you know, and I'm, and I'm kind of rushing through and going from one uh, print to the next, one impression to the next, I won't accidentally put my block in upside down and then have the weighting of my image messed up. Okay, so um, what that means is that um, even though this is where my pins and tabs are gonna be, this is actually going to be the bottom part of my image. Um, if my block were here like this, you would see that I would have slightly greater distance here than I do up here. It's just a visual convention that a lot of people do um, in printmaking, um, and it, it seems to give a little bit more balance uh, to uh, an image that has a border around it. Um, it's obviously optional, not everybody chooses to do that, and certain images maybe look better than others with a weighted border. Um, so here at the top I've got two and a quarter inches up here, and then down here I've got um, I've got just about three inches for the four by six block. Okay. Um, the nice thing about using um, using this is that it's thick. And actually, for this demonstration, I'm going to be uh, switching to the smaller format. So I'm going to draw in here what I want my new borders to be. Um, I still want my image to be sort of um, centered you know, from side to side, but I still want it to be weighted so that there's a little bit more distance at the bottom than at the top. Um, and so I'm just sort of like eyeballing this, but I think that that looks pretty good to me. Um, and so I'm just going to measure and get this to um, a more regular measurable um, distance. And so instead, I think I'm gonna go, uh, let's say, I'm gonna go two, two and a half. And so I'm gonna mark it there and I'm gonna mark it over here. And I'm going to draw a line across. Okay. And then that means that the bottom of my block is going to fall at seven and a half from from the end of my paper, more or less. Sure, there we go. And this block isn't totally perfect, so it's actually going to be slightly more than that. Okay, so. So I'm just allowing for the imperfection uh, in, in the block itself. Measure twice, cut once is what they say because I accidentally made a mistake there. Um, so it's, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line across here as well. So this is gonna be the lower um, boundary of where my block needs to sit. Okay. All right. So um, the next thing that I need to do is also go side to side. Okay, so I know that um, my block, the center of my block is gonna fall about here. And I just wanna make sure that I am 
measuring that perfectly. So um, if I measure my block, this is sort of a shortcut, but if I measure my block and I know that it's three inches wide and I make a mark on the back of the block here at one and three quarters inch and I draw a line down the back of my block like this, I already have it marked at the top, um, then I can line it up with that with that dotted line that I already drew, okay? Um, and that just makes it a little bit easier to center. But I'm still, I still wanna make sure that I'm measuring it, okay? So um, I'm gonna make a mark here. So three and three quarters from the end of my board. And since I know that everything is centered, in theory, if I measure the same from the opposite side, it should still be centered, okay? So I, I like to work from the center of, of the, whatever I'm using as my backing board, I always want to work from the center and, and establish that center line first. And sometimes I'll also draw a center line this way um, to just help me out, okay? Um, and so yet again, I'm gonna draw this line down like this. I'm gonna draw this line down like this. Okay. And so um, this is the bounding box here of where my block is gonna be sitting. Okay. Um, what I'm actually going to be doing is cutting that out. Um, and because the foam core is thick, like this, um, it's gonna cradle my block really nicely. Um, I'm gonna be printing this by hand because I don't have a press at home. So I'm gonna be printing with a spoon. I think I'm gonna start with a Baron and then um, go over it again with a wooden spoon or something similar. Um, and so um, having a little cradle, you know, inset area where my block can just, um, fit right in there really snugly is gonna make sure that my registration is always on point and that my block isn't shifting around, okay? So I don't want to cut um, any wider than my block itself. So I really want to be um, almost erring on the side of making my cut a little bit smaller than it needs to be so that when I wedge my block in there, it really um, fits snugly. Uh, into that into that space. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my ruler over when I cut. I know that seems counterintuitive because we have this non uh, non slip cork on the back, but um, when we're cutting with a ruler that has a backing on it, we have a tendency for our blade to kind of go under the edge of the ruler, and also we run the risk of marring um, the the ruled side. So I prefer to have. Uh, my ruler right down there so that my edge is exactly where I want it. Okay, and I'm leaving a little bit of room for, um, for the width of the blade as well, okay. And again, I'm erring on the side of making it a little bit more snug than it needs to be um, because I, I want to be able to wedge my block in there without it moving, okay. okay. And I made a little bit of a mistake there. It kind of went off of the um, off of the line a little bit, but I'm just going to come back the opposite direction um, and recut that line again. Um, and hopefully that won't make a big problem for me. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to do this on the other three sides. With the foam core, you know, it kind of compresses. Unless you have a really sharp blade, it's gonna kind of compress on you before you're able to cut it. Um, and so it's important to use a sharp blade, but also to use several strokes uh, to, go, to go at it, okay? Don't attempt to cut straight through the first time. So you can kind of score it, cut, and then with the second pass, then you can go all the way through. Um, and obviously I'm cutting on a cutting mat. If you don't have a cutting mat, um, maybe put 
again, like the back of a sketchbook underneath uh, so that you're cutting into that and not damaging the surface that you're cutting on. Um, you can also use like one of those plastic um, self-healing cutting boards that you might use in the kitchen. So um, I'm gonna flip this over and just see if I cut all the way through. It looks like there are a few areas that didn't go all the way through, so I'm just gonna score those with my, with my uh, X-Acto blade. Okay. And then I should be able to pop this right out in theory. So here it's kind of hanging on a little bit right there. I'm just gonna freehand this and just cut right through. And it's still a little bit attached in this area. So I'm just gonna go down a little bit harder. Okay, there we go. So I've pulled out the, the center piece here um, and I'm gonna try to wedge my block in here and hopefully it's gonna be snug. It's a little snug. It's a little bit too snug actually, um, which is a good thing because I can always remove material and I can never put it back, okay? So um, that's actually a good, a good thing right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut away a little bit more on this side. try to detach that and pull that away. And then in these corners, I can kind of dig in there with the X-Acto knife and pull that away. Okay, so let's try it again and see how snug this is gonna be. And I want it to be snug enough that I almost need to sort of press it down in there to get it to stay, okay? So there we go. It's nestled in there and that way it's not, it's not gonna move. So I'm trying to get it to move out of its place and it won't. So that means that during the entire printing of my edition, whether I'm doing three layers or 12 layers, um, as long as that window doesn't start to expand on me, it will stay in place. And I could use this if I were printing on a press or if I'm printing by hand, okay? So, um, there have been instances in the past where my window has started to expand on me, especially if I'm, well, actually only if I'm printing on a press um, because a little bit of the, of the, the, the pressure can kind of um, force the block to move within that window a little bit. Um, and in those cases, I've had to actually shim one of, the, one of the edges with, you know, an extra sliver of foam core or something like that that I would just stick in there um, and wedge in there so that the block doesn't move on me, okay? So now I have my position of where, you know, I want my block to sit. This is gonna be the, the top of my image here. So I put a little arrow just so that you can see. It's probably impossible for you to see, it's pencil. Uh, but my top of my image is facing this way. Um, and so I'm gonna have this much space at the top of my image. Um, and I'm gonna have this much space below my image. And that way, if I want to sign and number my print at the bottom, you know, I'm not encroaching too closely on the image area. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is, um, I'm actually gonna take my block out. It's wedged in there really well. So <laughs> this is a really good system. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is, I need to start establishing where my pins and tabs are gonna go, okay? So I've got my paper here. And again, I'm lining my paper up here with you know, the, the marked end of where my paper ends and also where it's ending on that side. Um, now what I can do is I can take two of these reusable pins or whatever system you happen to be using. Um, and you'll notice that they have a hole in, in the middle. And that's really useful because um, it helps me 
tape it down in a way that it's not gonna move on me. The other thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and snap my tabs on there before I even tape down my pins. Okay, so this is helpful. All right, so I like, um, I like my pins to be up in this area and I want my tabs to be not right in the middle of my printing paper, but I don't want them to be right on the ends either. Okay, so I want, I want to find a happy medium. So um, I'm gonna snap these in place where I want them and I think that this feels kind of comfortable, this, this kind of uh, arrangement. So let's see angle that so you can see it a little bit better okay so um, that way they're sort of centrally located they're evenly spaced and um, I just like that to be sort of regular when I tape things down so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some masking tape and in this case um, because I'm going right up to the edge of the foam core um, I'm going to have to go over the edge. So I'm just going to tape this down um, first like so. And I like to put my tape right over where the hole is going to be. And then I use my fingernail just to really burnish the tape in there. And I score it and sort of like burnish it with my fingernail right up to the inner edge of that open hole. Okay. And then in this case, I'm actually going to flip the tape over onto the back side. Okay. And I also tape, I also burnish it down on the outer edge of that ring as well. And that way, this is really not going to move at all during, during the process of printing. Um, when I'm printing a reductive woodblock print, it could take weeks or it could take even up to a few months, uh, depending on how many layers I'm doing, how much drying time I need to leave in between each layer, what other kinds of, you know, things come into play that interrupt my, my flow. Um, and so I really want to make sure that when I'm making a registration jig like this one, that it's going to hold up and it's going to stay the way that I need it to throughout the entire duration of the additioning process. Okay. So here we go. Burnishing that down here like that. Again, um, I just want to score it and just really tape it down well. I could put a second piece of tape if I wanted to, but I find that it's not even really necessary if I tape it well. Okay. Um, and so then here we go. So now I've got my two um, tabs already snapped on there. And this is going to be the easy part. So now you're going to wonder, well, how do you, how do you tape the whole edition before you even start printing? How do you know where to put the tabs? So um, I've got my paper, this paper, it has a smooth side and it has a rough side on the back. And so I want to make sure that I'm positioning it um, in relation to the jig so that the smooth side, which is going to be the side that I want to receive the ink, is facing down to where the block is going to be printing on it. And all I have to do is now just slide it under the tabs and Make sure that I position it so that it's centered. So, you know, I've got, I've got this line already pre-drawn here that indicates the top of where my paper needs to go. So I know that it just needs to go there. And if I wanted to, I could also mark the center line on all of my sheets of paper beforehand. So I could go down and just mark the center line on the back of every sheet of paper um, on the top and the bottom. And that way, all I have to do is line up the center of my sheet of paper that's already marked with that center dotted line that I have drawn on my jig. Um, so that's also um, useful for those of you that are doing the T and bar registration. Um, and so basically the T is that we have here essentially a T because we have the top line of where the paper goes and then the center line of our registration jig, and then um, a bar right here, which is the middle of my printing paper. And when the T and the bar line up on this side and on the opposite side, then I know that um, my paper is oriented 
um, in a way that my image is also going to be centrally located or, you know, positioned in the way that I need it to be. Um, and that it's going to be consistent throughout the entire edition. Okay, so I'm just going to be fidgeting with this for a minute just to make sure that I have it the way that I want. And then now all I have to do is, um, if I'm worried about my paper moving during this step, I can just weight it down with some blocks or some other heavy, heavy object. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a piece of uh, masking tape and I'm going to tape the tab onto my paper. So as I was saying before we got cut off there, um, what you need to do now is, um, you know, once you've taped all of your uh, pieces of paper that you're gonna be using in your edition. Here I only have two of them, uh, but in theory I would be doing my entire stack of printing paper. Um, once you have them all taped um, with the tabs on them and secured, then all you have to do is um, start inking your block and um, snapping the tabs onto the pins. And so what I do actually um, is when I have a block that fits so snugly into my registration jig, I like to apply something to my jig that will make it um, waterproof um, so that I can easily clean it off. And so that thing could be clear packing tape, it could be contact paper or something like that, um, or adhesive vinyl. Um, I like the clear packing tape because it allows me to still see my marks and my lines through it. And it's very easy. It's very easily accessible. You know, I can get it at the dollar store or, you know, anywhere pretty much. Um, and I can clean it off, which is the most important thing. Um, and so what I like to do is, because this is very hard to get in and out because it is so snug, after repeated, you know, uh, removing and, and putting it back in, it will get looser. Um, but what I can do is I can just ink it up on, on the spot, basically. So I can, I can ink up my block. Um, and if I accidentally roll off of my block with my brayer, if I have a clean rag at hand, um, I can just clean off the border area as long as it's coated with clear packing tape or something like that. Um, this one hasn't been treated like that yet, so um, I'm doing sort of like a dry run here. Um, but then all I have to do is once my block is inked, um, I can just carefully snap my tab onto the pin there and on this side. And I do it um, carefully in the sense that I make sure that I don't allow any contact to accidentally happen between the slack part of the paper and the edge of the block. Okay, so I, I try to hold it upward. I'm just sort of relaxing it so you can see uh, the pins and tabs here. And then once it's secured on there, I just let it drop onto my block. And then I'm gonna use a wooden spoon or a baron to apply good pressure and get a good impression. Um, and so what I will also do, which I'm not going to show you uh, for the sake of time, is uh, I would put a little piece of interleaving paper, maybe glassine or wax paper, oven paper or parchment, um, something like that, in between my printing paper and the baron or the, the wooden spoon that I'm going to use. And that way um, I don't run the risk of tearing my print um, as I'm printing. And then once I print, all I have to do is gently lift up the end. And then when I'm snapping it off, and I'm going to rotate it here so you can see it, when I'm pulling it off, I don't just yank it off like that. Um, I like to just come here and literally unsnap it like this. And then I will put the print aside to dry and then I'll apply the next uh, piece of paper. So I can go through my whole edition that way. I've done, you know, um, nine to 12 to 15 layer prints this way. Um, and it's a very simple system. The important thing is that if you're gonna be using this on a press, this is one thing that I do wanna say, if you're gonna be using the pin and tab system on a press, an etching press primarily, um, the really important thing is that you wanna make sure that your pins, the top of these pins, um, never become higher than the printable surface of your block um, because that can actually um, create a dimple, an indentation in the drum, in the roller of your etching press and 
permanently ruin it. Um, and so the really important thing is that um, you always make sure that your pin and tab uh, area is significantly lower than the, the principal area of your block. Um, it's a little bit easier with this block because it's very thick. Um, the same would go for like an MDF block or MDF backed linoleum. It gets a little bit trickier if you're doing something a lot thinner like um, a quarter inch, uh, or no, I'm sorry, three, three eighths inch shinna plywood or um, a quarter inch, something like that, or even unbacked linoleum. Those uh, surfaces are a lot, are a lot thinner. Um, and so you run the risk of your pin actually being higher than, than your principal area of your block. So those are, um, those are some considerations that you really, really need to consider if you're gonna be printing on a press.